Look at this thing. Look at it. Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So, it's the part two video of my Super Astute build. Um, I'll put a link to the um, initial build stage um, in the description, just in case you haven't seen it. Um, I ended that video early because I just felt that things were going wrong and uh, I had to do some research. So the issues I had, um, I've used the Fiberlite carbon full chassis set. Um, it's a, it is absolutely gorgeous. But when I started to build it, um, the front shock tower is way too big. After I've done this section of the video, we'll bring a camera over and I'll show you all this. But um, yeah, I had massive concerns that the shock tower was gonna be too big. Um, the second issue we had, there were six holes that I, sorry, five holes that I had to countersink myself into the carbon. You know, again, it's no biggie, but um, it was just something I didn't expect and I don't particularly want to be countersinking holes that should be done already. So anyway, we did that um, and it, it's fine. Um, then when I came to do the fix, fix the servo mounts, um, obviously you get one fixed hole and then you get your sort of oval hole for the adjustment. That hole's too big um, against the original chassis. So for now, I've just put a washer on there. Um, luckily, the under tray on the mounting holes on the under tray has kind of pips, so it stands off the chassis slightly. Probably only about one and a half mil, but it's enough for that screw to be okay. But nevertheless, I'm going to... Um, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do. Um, I've obviously got a bit of time before I come to run it, but I, I am to, gonna have to sort that out because if I pulled on it, it would come through the hole. So I was disappointed with that. And then finally, <laughs> I came to fit the body shell and um, it seemed to be way out. Now, obviously we've got a bit of extra thickness on the both carbon towers. You might have an extra two, two and a half mil in total, um, but I couldn't, get the body to line up. I couldn't even get it on. Now, turns out the body's fine. Turns out the car's fine. Um, you really have to manhandle the shell to get it on the chassis. Now, I didn't know that. I certainly didn't expect that. And in this video, I'll show you how I fit it. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just so used to just, when your body shell's finished, you just sit it on, put your clips in or Velcro it, whatever the fastening is. This, you can't do that. You've got to sort of fix it in one end and then pull it round. You're bending it all and then your, your front end's under a load of stress, which you're gonna see, and then you gotta bend it and get it onto the shock towers. Yeah, not something I'm used to, and especially with a cool painted shell. You know, it's having to manhandle it or having to be that rough with it. Um, it means you're gonna put some scratches in if you're not careful. Anyway, I mean, as you you saw in the intro, the thing is stunning. So what we'll do now is I'll bring a camera over and I'll show you what I've done and uh, how I fixed some of the issues and what it looks like. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing, this. So as you can see, this really is a thing of beauty, especially with it all being full carbon. I, it's just, it's a nice personal touch that I like to do. There's absolutely nothing wrong with a standard FRP Tamiya chassis whatsoever, but you know what it's like. Carbon's just that extra bling factor. Um, anyway, yeah, as you can see, the chassis is finished and we have built and fitted the aeration shocks to it. Now, these shocks are dry. They're all built correctly, but there's no oil in them. And the reason I did that was because I had no idea what the stance of the car would be. Also, I didn't think at the time that the with it, the larger front shock tower, I thought I'm gonna, well, I actually thought the shocks had finished down here and I'd have to cut some of the top off. But it's been a blessing in disguise to have the larger shock tower because um, it's absolutely perfect for those aeration shocks. Just to give you some idea of the size difference, this is a kit shock tower in FRP. It's going to be the best way to show you this. So if I sit it kind of be no, that's useless, isn't it? Yes, this is not going to work on camera. 
So you get, I think you can see the idea there, it's tiny compared to this one. But when I decided, or when I was planning to do this car, I did my research because I I wanted to see what other guy or what other guys had done who'd used the small bar aeration shocks, and they had fitted them to the standard tower. Um, now looking at mine, I'm not too sure how they did it. Now um, they must have really had to put a lot of internal spaces inside those shocks um, because I think with the shocks being a lot further down. Anyway, I don't know, but they have done it. But um, yeah, again, for me, this just seems to work. Um, look at that. How nice is that? So, how many holes? Three holes at the back, they had to be countersunk. And there's two. There's another, this carbon, carbon brace here. Um, there's two two or three holes that I had to countersink into that countersunk into that piece. Um but again, no bigger. If you haven't got a drill I guess it's a bigger but luckily we have the stuff to do it. And then that's this is generally too big. As I say I've put a washer underneath it. It's not the best and I will have to make a better fix but um again it was just another blessing that the under tray kind of has standoffs on it because um if that had been flat, then it, that under tray would have been pushing on it and it would have scratched the under tray as well, which is not ideal. Fitment of the shocks, very easy, but they're not perfect. So I used the um, the mounting bits that, came, that come with the aeration shocks. So there's a little ball, it's a plastic ball that you snap into the bottom of the shock and then it's just a standard kit screw all the way through. Um, no play side to side, that's actually okay. But on the tops, we do have too much play. I'll show you if you look, if you do that, you see it bouncing. So that's no good. Um, now what I did was I've just used the actual Super Astute um, fitment here, this piece of alloy, and then standard screw. Again, on the aeration shock, there's a ball cup inside. But um, as you can see, it, you know, that's, it's okay for now, but that needs fixing. Um, not too sure what I'll do with that yet. Um, we'll we'll have some bits and bats laying around to to sort that out. But um, again, as I say, these are dry, so it gives me the ability to get the stance right because it's not moving because there's no oil in them, so they just stay there for now. So again, until we come to run it, that's pretty perfect to be honest, because um, it means I can mess around with the stance without having put spaces in and what have you. Um, as you see, when the car's finished, the stance is really nice. Um, rear's exactly the same. Happy with the um, the bottom of the shocks, they're perfect. But again, it's got, let's see if we can do that. And just see it, it's got far too much play there. Um, so whatever we come up with, we'll have to fix all four um, at some point. And I think that's about it. As I say, I'm, I'm I'm mega happy with it. So what we'll do now is we'll start putting the other parts on. Um, let's start with the gear cover. So I decided not to paint this. Um, I've seen a lot of guys do them in white and they look cool, but I just, what I did was I, when I cut around it, I um, took the protective film off and then just placed it on and I just thought, yeah, that needs to be transparent. It, it looks a bit. So there's three screws to do that and I've also clipped that little section comes off so you can get your spanner, um, your spanner, your box spanner onto the slipper clutch for adjustment while you're using it. So for me personally, I just think that looks super cool. There's, um, there are some decals, the TTC decals you can put on it, but I, again, I'm not going to bother. I just think, one, and obviously one some motors in the back end as well, but that hasn't arrived yet. It's getting a 13 triple team Orion brush motor in it. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think that looks mega cool. Right, next up, um, under tray. So again, this was all painted by Craig in the UK and um, he surprised me by putting the Tamiya logo on the under tray, which is absolutely superb. So obviously genuine Tamiya polycarbonate, so I just had to open the six, what is it, five holes and put them, open them up with a, um, what do you call it? I always forget what you call these things. What the hell do you, anyway, it'll come to me, no doubt. Um, 
So yeah, um, what is this? So there's one screw in the back, the two sides, and then two at the front to bolt it down. And that's how the under tray fits. As I say, five screws. That just looks absolutely superb. I'm loving it. Um, yeah, very straightforward. It's an under tray, but um, yeah, it does the job and seals the majority of the chassis off. So next up, I'll show you the decals I used on the shell and wing. So as I said earlier, I was never a fan of how the wing looks on the Stu or Super Stu. It's it sat very flat and very pushed up to the body. Um, and even with the wing mount using the standard holes, it's, there's not a great deal of adjustment you can give it. So obviously the wing came um, pre-drilled already. So what I did was obviously you can see I just marked and I put two new holes in. So I could get the wing to sit further back and hopefully when you see the wing on the car you'll understand why I did that. Um, now I knew I could cover that up with decals. Um, so obviously the Tamiya holes are underneath. Oops! <laughs> the Tamiya holes are underneath this decal so you can't see them. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now these decals, massive shout out to Duncan in the UK. He sent me these. These are um, chrome mirror finish with blue outline. I've never had a set of these style before, but uh, I think you'll agree if you just, you know, if you put, if you have them in the right light, you just, these, they absolutely pop. I love it. I just think it looks awesome. So yeah, that's what we did with the wing. And uh, not a great deal of decals, decals on the main shell. Um, I went with this chrome Tamiya one there. Looking at it now, it might have been better on the roof. Um, where I, you would have seen the different color, couple of different colors coming through on the stars, which I've done before. But nevertheless, I quite like that. We've got a little TRF at an angle at the front. Um, we've got the standard VG Volac and Transpeed on the sides. Again, in the right light, superb. And then just a main one. I, I was debating where to fit that particular decal. Um, usually they go on the back, but I thought let's try to keep a little bit of the paint showing because there's not a great deal happening in that section. But again, you know, they, they really do pop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try show you me fitting this shell. Um, and you, you, you might be rather surprised how rough I have to be with it. Right, so this is not for the squeamish, I warn you now. So you've got to get this back end in first because there's, there's hardly any room between the shock and the um, under tray. See, I've, I've put a few little scratches in already. But uh, anyway, so we, we have to we put it in that set. What I probably need to show you first before I do this is how the back of the shell is cut out. So all this section has to sort of fit just behind this tower. So fit one side on and then I've got to turn the car around this is where you start pressing down with your thumb and holding it up here but I've got to get it over the second mount while not scratching the front on that shock tower hang on now it's got attached on the velcro to push down get it under and over the screw there we go and then we get it over the under tray itself and push down now oh, I hate this bit so I've got to bend the front and put in a lot of pressure on that body and oh my god see what I mean now obviously once it's down because of the angle you know it's there's plenty of room there and then as you probably saw earlier I velcroed it already so now there are two mounting holes there so it's just a case of when it's in position to push it through the mounting holes and then just clamp your sides down and then just push the velcro in so it does fit but as you can see that is a little bit of a mission um, and also it, on the battery um, strap it does hit on the shell um, so I had to change the body the body pin post Sorry, the pin itself from, from a large one to a small one, but it does sit on that on that side. So you've got to be aware of that because that means it sits higher at this side. And if you, you, you don't want to match it on this side, so this to get it looking flush and straight, this side has to be raised up a little bit. 
So anyway, you get the idea. Now, um... so that's what I've done with the wing. So to you, astute lovers, you'll know that that wing would be sat a lot um, more further down and it'd be crunched right up to the back of the body. I think that looks way better, if I'm honest. Um, now, obviously I am very biased, but it kind of looks maybe how it should have looked. Um, and again, all I've done is we've put two extra holes in and give it a little bit more angle. It just makes the wing look like it's actually doing something now. It always kind of looked a little bit redundant for me in the standard sort of format. Right, um, let's bang the wheels on. Boom, she's done. Now, obviously I'm incredibly biased, but um, I think that looks absolutely the bee's knees. I really do. I just think everything works on that. And that larger front shock tower it makes it look a little bit meatier on the front end, which again I like. Uh, and again, the, the wing, yeah, it just, for me, it just works. I love it. I'll tell you what I will just show you, because as I said, we haven't got the shocks with oil in. So just to give you an idea on ride height, so this is why these shock towers are perfect. So that's the shocks at the fully extended. And you can see absolutely shed load of um, um, ride height. But for me, that's kind of where it wants to be. I mean, again, I'm not going to be able to run this due to winter for a, a few months or a lot of months. So it is just going to sit pretty on the shelf for now. But that's the kind of ride height I'm really happy with. And then from the rear, again, once it's got that team of Ryan uh, brush motor in, that's going to really liven that back end up. And it's a nice looking motor as well. So just waiting for that to land. And then the final one. To me, that looks quick. Just, stu just sat there. <laughs> that's going to be pretty epic when we get this thing ripping stick in comments what you think guys I know a lot of you are not a lover of the TRF paint style jobs I understand that um, but again this in hindsight I wouldn't have had this done in the, these colours um, I'd ordered this it had arrived and I'd sent the shell off to Craig in the UK and then after that I got hold of a TRF 201 and then the Dynastorm so yeah, I wouldn't. It would never have been box art though. Hundred percent don't like the box art on this, but possibly might have done it in black. They look well with the stick, the kit decal decals and the, the shell and wing in black. Anyway, stick in comments what you think. Well, guys, I hope you like it. Um, I'm pretty much in love with this actually, if I'm honest. Again, it didn't start that way. Um, I was really full of optimism when I started to put it all together, and then. I got quite disappointed with the chassis, but everything turned out okay in the end, thankfully. And yeah, I have to say, looks-wise, this is one of my, yeah, it's one of my favourites. Um, it is superb, and what a great build. Completely different to what I'm used to. I'd say I've never built an astute or super astute before. Um, and to have this one now, because these kits already, although it came out in 2018, these kits are harder to find, and if you do find one, they're mega expensive. I think I paid 240 quid for this kit. Nearly 100 quid on all the carbon chassis set. Probably 80 quid on the small bar aeration shocks. Probably 20 quid on the full bearing set. You know, all of a sudden, it's this is an expensive car now. But, as I say, they're getting fewer and harder to find. So now I've got one, and I've, I've got one that's kind of done to my spec as it were so anyway i'll end this video here um, a massive thank you to everyone who watches my stuff it's massively appreciated if this is the first time you've seen my stuff if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us and if, if you do that smash that notification bell for our weekly videos and as always happy i see you.